All right, everyone, welcome back, and let's just get started right away. Today we're going to look at multiplying two-digit numbers by two-digit numbers, and I got to say this is one of my favorite lessons of all time. I love teaching you guys how to do different strategies uh, and how to multiply these bigger numbers, and I'm excited to show this to you because I love that you can choose your own adventure, and there's going to be some ways that are going to click with you better than others and so just in order to get this into our heads please remember that you're all unique there's no one else like you in the world and some of these things will work better for you and some will not and so you got it's up to you to choose what works best for you and stick with it and so I'm going to show all six strategies but I want you to understand all six but some are quicker than others and some are more visual than others and some are just harder and so you will decide what works best for you. So we're going to multiply 28 times 17, but in our last lesson we talked about estimating, and it's really important that we get a good estimate because we want to be in the right spot. And so I have 28 times 17. Well, what if I changed? Um, we could do a couple things. 28 times 20. We could say 30 times 20. Um, we could do front end rounding, which is 20 times 10, but that would be a big underestimate. Uh, let's let's go with this one. 30 times 20 is just quick and easy. 3 times 2 is 6. Add the two zeros. Our answer will be in the neighborhood of 600, but this is an overestimate because I raised um, the number both. So it'll be under 600, but it'll be in the probably in the 500 somewhere. I'm going to guess. Well, the first strategy we're going to look at is something we're going to call the traditional. And this is the one that I learned in, um, in school. Your parents would have learned in school. And um, after I show you all these other ways, you're going to like the other ways. You're going to show your parents and they're going to be utterly confused. So um, let's, let's go to the ancient old method first and I'll show you how that works. It can get kind of confusing if you're not really paying attention. So um, we're going to do um, always in this motion we multiply these two and then we multiply these two then we multiply these two then we multiply these two and a lot of the strategies that um, we're going to look at are variations of this idea where we're multiplying different digits together but they just look different so first of all we need to know what eight times seven is and that is 56 and in this method i only write the six for the 56 and i like kind of carry this five over now I'm going to do 2 times 7, that's my next one, 2 times 7 is 14, but mentally in my head i got to add this 5. 2 times 7 is 14 plus 5, 2 times 7 is 14 plus 5 is 19, and I write it like this. Now in the method, we just write a 0. Uh, when we go to the next level, we write a 0. If we had more digits, we would go another, we would actually do two zeros. Um, the reason we're doing this is because this is a 10, and we got to remember that's a 10. So. 1 times 8 is 8, and then lastly, 2 times 1 is 2, and what we do with these is we add them all up. So we have 6, 9 plus uh, 8 is 17, carry the 1, 476. So actually my 600 was really off. 476 is our answer. The next one we're going to look at is something called the partial method, and it starts the same, but there's going to be a lot more mental math going on in our head. and for this method, you need to be able to multiply in your head, but not only that, but you need to remember how to do multiples of 10. Because remember that you need to know that this 2 doesn't mean 2, it means 20, and this 1 doesn't mean 1, it means 10. So what we're going to do is, and it doesn't really matter where you start, um, let's say I, I do the 8 times 7 is 56, and then I got to think 7 times 20, 7 times 20 is 140. Then I got to think, if I'm going this way, you know, 10 times 8 is 80. And then lastly, 10 times 20 is 200. We're doing this in our head, and we add all this up. 6 plus all those zeros is 6. 5 plus 4 is 9. Plus 8 is 17. Carry the 1. And again, we get 476. So this, is a, this could be a bit quicker um, because there's a lot more mental math. But you really gotta, you really gotta understand that this and this don't mean one and two. Okay, the next method is something called the distributive property, and that's a big fancy word. And so we're going to set it up a little bit differently. And you need to know that 28 really is 20 plus eight. And so we put these in brackets: 20 plus eight. 
And we're going to multiply that by 17, which is 10 plus 7. And so this is how we set up our distributive property way of uh, multiplying. The idea here is the people in this neighborhood need to meet both the people in this neighborhood and vice versa. So to do that, I like to draw lines. And so this 20, he needs to meet number 10, but he also needs to meet number 7. Okay, And this 8 needs to meet number 10, and this 8 needs to meet number 7. And so we're going to multiply, these lines mean we're going to multiply. So in this sense, 20, how about this guy? 20 times 7 is 140. And then this 8 is meeting this 10, that's 80. Well, this 8 is also meeting the 7, which is 56. And then lastly, the 20 and the 10 meet together for 200. Um, it looks very familiar. We've done this quite a bit. This is kind of the same thing as the last one. Um, 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 5 is 17, and then we get the 476 again. So if you'd like to look at it this way, break it apart and have the neighbors meet, you can do that way. Okay, this method here is called lattice, and to do lattice, we need to make a box. And so what we do in each box is above, we're going to write 28 times 17. Okay, it's kind of a grid. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this box and we're going to divide them into these triangles. Okay, and then you'll understand how that works in a sec. And so well, it's like a grid, so we need to multiply. So in this area here, we're going to multiply 2 times 1. We kind of look down and then across. I need to erase all that. So 2 times 1 is 2, but we need to put a 0 for the tens place, so it's 2. And then here is 8, in this box here is 8 times 1, and that is 8, so we write 0, 8. In this box here, in this box here we're doing 2 times 7. 2 times 7 is 14, and then in this box, we haven't guessed, it's going to be 8 times 7, which is 56. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at these different um, angled columns here and if it helps you to draw these little dotted lines or I guess you could extend it out a bit this is what we're gonna add up so we're gonna add up everything in the in the the diagonal lines um, 6 is by itself so we put a 6 um, going this way 8 plus 5 plus 4 8 plus 5 is 13 plus 4 is 17 and we're gonna carry the one like we've been doing before. So one plus zero plus two plus one is four. And here's our answer, 476. All right, the next method is called the box method. And it, and it sets up similar to the lattice, but we're just gonna break these apart. 20 plus eight and 10 plus seven because it's 28 times 17, and it's gonna look like the same method, but in the box we're going to multiply. 8 times 10 is 80, 20 times 7 is 140, and 8 times 7 is 56. If you haven't guessed that, we're going to add all these up. You're pretty good. And all together again, we come up with 476. All right, the last thing we're going to look at is called the area method. And so just to remind us, we're doing 28 times 17. And I don't recommend this method, to be honest. It's a little time consuming but if it helps you understand it visually I guess like it works so I'm gonna go 28 this way and 17 this way so what I need to do is I need to count 28 boxes so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 Okay, so that's a really big box, and I need to go 17 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I should have gone up one. I'm going to go up. Okay, and I'm going down. So I'm going to erase. I ran out of space. You can see why this is not a, the greatest method. Well, for me anyway, maybe some of you will like it. So, and then I need to go across here and I get this big area. Now I'm going to look for 10 times 10 to start with. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to draw 
a line going down, but I also want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so this line I know is 100. 10 times 10 is 100. Well, I'm going to do the same thing over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to draw a line down here. And there's another 100. Well, what's left over? I'm going to continue this line, but now they're in groups of 10. So I have a 10, 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 and a 10. How many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 there. Now we're left over with all these guys, and so we're going to do the same thing here, but we're going to put our 10s this way. And so again, we have a 10, a 10, a 10, 10, 10, 10, a 10. Now I gotta, I can probably fit more 10s in here if I go down. And you can maybe see why this, oh, sorry, it's getting a little off kilter there. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. You can see why this is really time consuming. Now, what do we do here? I don't have 10 going this way and I don't have 10 going this way. So these are all individuals. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8 times 7 is 56 in this box. So guess what we have to do now? We have to add all this up. So all together, this is 200 plus 80. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Plus 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times 2 is a, uh, 140. If we add all these up plus the 56, we're going to get our 400. 76 so yes while this might work well visually it's really really time consuming and you need grid paper to start all right i'm gonna eat to try this one jimmy has an amazing job renting bicycles he gets paid 28 dollars per hour in one week he worked for 48 hours how much money can he expect to earn for that week i'd like you to pick one of the methods i showed you and use it to help you solve this problem 28 dollars per hour um, this is an amazing job. If you can find a job like this, you take it, right? Uh, he was working for 48 hours in that week, which is a lot of work, but um, I mean, at that, at that rate, you get paid pretty well. Um, choose one of the methods and pause it, and I'm going to show how to do all six again. All right, quickly blowing through this, we're going to, if you haven't guessed, we're going to multiply 28 times 48, and I'm going to do the traditional method first. 8 times 8 is 64 carry the 6. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 6 is 200 and well 224 is 22. 8 times 4 oh gotta add the 0. 8 times 4 is 32 and this is where it gets confusing is if you have multiple numbers being carried over. 2 times 4 is 8 plus uh, 3 is 11. So we add these two together 4, 4, 3, so in the end, he will, um, Jimmy will earn $1,344 for that summer job. Good paying job. All right, the partial method. Again, set up the same 48 times 28. We're doing some mental math in this one. Uh, 8 times 8 is 64 again, but 8 times 40 is 320. 20 times 8 is 160, and 20 times 40 is 800, and we add those up, 4, um, 6 plus 2 is 8, plus 6 is 14, carry that, 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 1 is 5, plus 8 is 13, again we have the same answer. Distributive property, so this one we break it apart, so 20 plus 8 times 40 plus 8. And remember they're meeting the neighbor, so 20 is going to meet 4, uh, 20 is going to meet 40 for 800, plus 20 is going to meet the 8 for 160, 8 is going to meet the 40 for 320, 
and the 8 is going to meet the 8 for 64. We add those up, we're still going to get our same answer. In the lattice method, I should have a box here. So, and we divide it up like so. And so we have 28 times 48. So 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 8 is 64. And 2 times 8 is 16. Remember, we extend these columns now. This will be a 4. 2 plus 6 is 8. Plus 6 is 14. Carry that. 1 plus 3 is 4. Plus 8 is 12 plus that is 13 carry the one so when we go around the around the edge 1344 box method um, again i need a box this time we're breaking it apart though 20 and an 8 times 40 and an 8 it doesn't really matter which um, side the numbers go on um, this will be 800 in this box this will be 320 in this box. This will be 160 in this box. This will be 64. Please remember, we're multiplying, you know, this times this, um, this times this um, in this box. Does that make sense? And if you add all those boxes up, you're going to get our same answer there. And then lastly, the area method. Um, you need to set this up. And uh, a lot of counting in this one. So if you chose this, you're kind of sucker for punishment here. So um, what's going to save me is that each of these lines is worth um, 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 48. And then 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 28. So I'm going to go across here. And I'm looking for groups of 10. And so that would be a group of 10. This would be a group of 10. Group of 10. Group of 10. And so I can keep going. No, I can't keep going down. And I can look for another group of 10. Group of 10. Group of 10. Group of 10. And then I'm left with... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times ten is eighty. And again, eighty, eighty. And then this guy was going down. That'll be an eighty. So this is going across. And so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So be an eighty, eighty. And then this will be 8 times 8, which is 64. So I have 100, 100, 100, oops, 100, 100, 100, 100, and 100. Wow, that's a lot of work. So if you like this area method, good on you. Um, you might have to ask your teacher for less questions. But there you go. So guys, in this lesson, we learned six different methods to multiply two digit numbers. I hopefully you saw one that you liked better. I'm kind of impartial to the partial method or actually the lattice one. Uh, I find those ones really quick and easy. Um, but if your mental math is not as strong, then maybe not do that one. Anyways, thank you guys. And please remember, in life, math happens. Take care.